bring in the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Mike McCarthy, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee, the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Uh, doing well. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us, as always. Uh, so right. we, were t we were talking about uh, kind of sports going back to the old school. What's going to happen next in terms of the trends? Are we going to get mid-range jumpers in basketball? With yeah. Baseball really kicked it <laughs> off with Bruce Bochy being an old school guy. We're going to start getting some more bunting like the Arizona Diamondbacks. What do you think, Mike, could be the football trend that we see come back? Um, well, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think like anything, you know, at this point in the year, you know, I, I think that the offenses, you know, catch up to the defenses. Um, so uh, maybe more wide open football. Oh, wide more open wide football. Open. Or is it not try to spread it out and throw down the field now? What do you mean? What do you mean by more wide open? Well, that's, you know, that's the beauty of the interpretation, Sean. So why don't you take it and run with it, all right? <laughs> oh, oh, this is a strategic thing. We're I not see gonna... what you did there. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't wake up this morning and say, hey, Sean was going to go philosophical this morning. That just was not oh. in, my, in my lane here. So, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Setting the tone. It's going to be like that today. All right. <laughs> no, um, no, good. Hey, I'm, no, no, hey, I'm all yours. <laughs> It's okay. First drive. Minutes, so you better hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Set the tone. Here we go. Um, Coach, uh, how are you looking at this Giants game? And can the Arizona game kind of scare you guys, warn you guys, uh, and, and, and let that serve you a little bit after what happened against the Cardinals since you're such a major favorite and expected to take care of the, the Giants? Oh, definitely. I think Arizona is an excellent reminder. But I, I think really um, when I – look at this particular game, uh, you know, if you remember, I think it was last year, we were a significant favorite against Houston, and we all know how that game came down to the end. So, and I think that's just another, you know, weekly reminder, and it's, you know, represents how hard the NFL is. So, we need to just really, really focus on ourselves. We want to improve from our, our last contest in Philadelphia, make sure we're, we're continuing to grow, but at the end of the day, we, you know, we need to go get the sixth win. And, and I think the guys have really uh, practiced well yesterday. I was, I, was, I was very pleased with the practice. And, you know, because you know, the ability to have a healthy week of preparation clearly gives you a chance to get off to a great start on Sunday. So that's, that's our mindset. Coach, do you subscribe to the theory of, like, division games or just throw the records out? They're, they're a little bit more difficult. And why is that? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's – you prepare more for your division games. Obviously, you know when you get even you get into the off season, you're always keeping an eye on what your three uh, division opponents are doing. Uh, you play twice a year. There's a lot of familiarity. Uh, you look at the familiarity of the coaching staffs uh, throughout our division. You know, in, in how competitive our division is. I mean, you got really four playoff caliber football teams in our division. But absolutely, without a doubt, these these are the toughest games of the year. You know, we don't know much about, like, Tommy DeVito. Uh, did y'all scout him out of college? W what kind of game does he have? Um, uh, did not, uh, but he's uh, he definitely has the ability to run. I mean, that's the thing, just, you know, visiting with Dan in, in, in the video that, uh, you know, he has shown me is, you know, he's a really good athlete, uh, but, you know, it's it's not too often you see, you know, you see a quarterback put the ball in his left hand and take off and run through the A and B gap. So he's a – He's, he's got really good feet. Um, he's you know he's a he's a playmaker, you know playing above the two point three. So those are the things we're focused on. Really, you know anticipating him coming you know in here Sunday and you know more quarterback movements than than we've probably seen of late. So uh, but I would definitely put him in the classification of a mobile quarterback. You know one one thing on the mobile quarterback is that you think like the future where the pocket passer is kind of going to go away and you you better be a mobile guy. Well, I think you have to do both uh, to be a championship quarterback. You got to be able to win from the pocket and win out of the pocket. So uh, that's something I've always believed in, as far as the training of a quarterback, what you look for, and how you know how you want that quarterback to run your offense. So um, I, I just think it's you know, so difficult uh, in today's NFL. I mean, these defensive lines, the, the depth. Uh, I mean, if you don't have five number one picks on your defensive line, you're not very good in today's standards. So I mean, it's just. You know, you, you see it each and every week. So I think your ability to play in the pocket and out of the pocket is a must. 
Mike McCarthy here on the fan. Speaking of playing out of the pocket, uh, Dak has just taken his game to another level. It feels like, seems like, in the last three weeks, uh, and just and just playing out of his mind. How much consideration have you given, Coach, to changing the identity and the formula from defense, run, take care of the ball, possession to let's just turn this thing over to the quarterback and let's let's try to let's try to blow up the scoreboard. How much have you thought about changing the identity of what you wanted this season to start off being? Well, I, I, I don't really look at us as, uh, you know, defense, run the ball, don't turn it over. I mean, I think those are variables you have to have within your, within your you know, within your football team. Uh, you know, I think clearly, you know, we want to score more points than anybody. Uh, we want to keep them, their points down. But I think it's, you know, how you play is really was what we emphasized coming out of the last off season. And that was the ability to, you know, be more efficient offensively, take care of the ball better, um, make sure we're maximizing our opportunities, our time of possession points to that. So that was something I felt that we really need to improve on. Our ball security is better. Um, we're still taking it away at a at a top level. So it, it's, but yeah, make 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 no mistake about it. We we still want to be an aggressive offensive attack. I think the head coach is an offensive guy too. So I, I think we do want to be <laughs> a little more open there. So. <laughs> Coach, you uh, you had mentioned um, this off season that that obviously you know as you're taking over the play calling, you were you were getting more hands on time directly with Dak with the quarterback room. How do you feel like your relationship with Dak has evolved over the course of your time, uh, you know, calling plays here? Well, I think we have an excellent relationship. I've, I've always enjoyed you know you know him as a person, and you know obviously the player coach relationship, but. You know, definitely. I, when when you when the play caller and the quarterback have to spend as much time as possible together, uh, you know, we we talk a lot about play call purpose and and just the ability to talk through those plays each and every week and how you see it that week. You know, against the uh, the you know the the opponent uh, is is so important. So um, I spend as much time with Dak during the day as I possibly can. Mike McCarthy here every Friday on Sean R. Jam Bobby, 105.3 The Fan. Uh, when you were asked about uh, Cook's involvement earlier in the week, you talked about playing to the discipline of the quarterback. We were wondering uh, what that actually meant, Coach. Could you, could you just explain what, what, what that means? Well, I, I think it's, it's like anything. You know, we, we're, we all want – everybody wants the football, and, and ideally you like to get the ball to everybody. Uh, but, you know, for the quarterback to be, you know, to play to the efficiency that we just talked about, you know, he has to he has to run the offense uh, with the discipline of you know going through his progressions and not forcing the ball to a guy, um, you know, that that may need a catch or need a throw. I, I think I think that's really is all part of the play caller purpose and and, and, and and identifying through game plan, creating opportunities for for all the guys. And even when you do create opportunities. And you're and really with that making him the primary receiver that you know it doesn't necessarily guarantee he's going to get the ball. So and, and I, that's something I, I think is a natural challenge for a quarterback um, because you are totally in tune and connected to your teammates and you know and the amount of time the quarterback spends with the offensive perimeter players is is definitely you know excessive and uh, so he's you know he's aware when a guy doesn't get the football and, and you know and, and it's it's not it's not a reflection of what. Brandon or anybody's doing wrong. It's just, you know, playing to the discipline of the offense because, you know, that, that's how you have the, you know, when you look at, if you have 70 plays in a football game, you know, you need to distribute the football at least at least 75% of those plays. I mean, someone has to either, you know, you either hand it off to them or you pitch it to them or you throw it to them. But ball distribution is so important to the efficiency, which then definitely play, play plays into the time of possession and things we've already talked about. So, and that that's really what that's all about. Coach, how much do you believe in the idea of scheme fits? Is that something that we, we kind of overblow in the media? Are good football players just good football players who should be able to adapt to any concepts? Um, I, I think that's a question more for, for people that, 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 that are regimented in their scheme beliefs. Um, I, I think conceptually in today's NFL, you, you have to be able to, Fit any player of talent in, into your into your system, and if and if you can't fit the player into the system, then I think you have to look at the system, and um, and then with that you got to also it, it's got to have a starting point. You know, some offenses in the old days were built around the the halfback. You know, um, this offense is 
has has always been for the time in my in my thirty years in the league is, is built around making the quarterback successful. Uh, so the, just the common sense of the fact that he has a ball in his hand every play is why we spend so much time in the discipline, you know, in the efficiency how the ball is distributed. So you know, I, I think scheme is um, is more evaluated more, and I think it's a credit to the to the industry. You know the access of information, and, and I, I think it's something that can maybe get overblown a little bit. Do you think the same applies for quarterbacks in this specific scheme? I, I think quarterbacks need to fit the, the philosophical approach of the offense. You know, I, I think that's where mm. sometimes it gets to be a challenge. Coach, I know uh, jumping back to Brandon Cooks. I know you've said this week that hey, what Brandon Cooks is doing, it goes beyond whatever goes into a box score. He's doing good things for us. What are some of the ways oh, yeah. that you feel like he's he's contributing and playing well right now that aren't just going to show up in his stat line? I mean, he, he's a an excellent contributor both on and off the field. So, off the field is uh, ultimate professional work ethic, um, totally engaged in the game plan, has clear understanding of what the defense is doing, um, understanding of the techniques and details of, you know, each corner, how we anticipate they're going to play us. Um, and then, you know, I, I think just like anything in the game, I mean, it's when he lines up, um, you know, there's, you know, there's, he, he's, he has the ability to take two, you know, with his vertical speed. And, um, and you know, he, he does, he does things that they react differently to him. So, uh, so that is definitely an asset that doesn't show up in a box score. Coach, I know you also said uh, this week when when a lot of people were talking about how Terrence Steele played. I know Brian Schottenheimer said, "Hey, Terrence knows he's he's got to play better." That wasn't a great game for him. I know you said that that the injury coming back from the injury is obviously going to be a part of it. What do you think this his his trouble recently has been more about? Is it about a technique thing? Is it confidence, or or do you think it is just as simple as, "Hey, this is the reality of trying to come back from a serious injury." That's the reality of coming back from a serious injury. I think that's re really. What every every player goes through that, that has a major joint injury, and you got to remember he didn't miss any time either. You know, I, I was I was uh, shocked in a good way that that he was going to, that he was even ready for training camp. Uh, so you know he's been ahead of the curve the whole time in his rehab and, and coming back. But you know, it, it, everything he does throughout this year is it's, it's a first for him. You know, so I mean, there's some things he's he's going to have to deal with and is dealing with it. You know, I, I think it just it's just part of coming back, uh, and that that first year is very difficult. Coach, what has been your belief or history in terms of giving help to the tackle? Jerry said, and he's obviously right. Uh, you know, we you you have to have guys out in patterns. If you're in a high scoring game, we got to score too. Kind of, what's just your overall philosophy on giving help to to one of the tackles who could be struggling, and and when to do it within a game? Yeah, definitely. Um, it, you, you, you try to be selective. Um, you know, obviously, you know, when you go back and look at it, you know, you look at the numbers of how often do it. But we have, I would say, we're, you know, volume-wise, it's probably in the upper echelon for health protections and how we do it. Uh, but, you know, there's obviously certain situations and places on the field that, you know, you're, you're also playing to the time clock of the quarterback and passing game to get that extra guy out. So uh, that's, you know, that's part of the chess match of the game. So. Uh, but yes, definitely. I mean, you, you, you have to you have to help these guys out in, in, in certain situations. Because there's things that go on during the game that you know people may not realize either, where you may have to help somebody. But yeah, that's definitely part of our protection plan. Coach, thank you for the time. As always, we appreciate it. Best of luck against the Giants. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Mike McCarthy, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee, the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys.